First, the NSX4 multi-hypervisors. It has numerous security features. First, there is the port security where you can whitelist IP and MAC addresses, so you prevent IP, MAC, and ARP spoofing. Next, within a layer 2 segment, you can implement private VLAN, which is pretty simple, so it stops communication between VMs in the overlay segment. They can only communicate with external hosts. So it's a private VLAN where the common nodes have to be outside of the overlay network. And then there are security profiles that you can apply to individual VM NICs. They are layer 3, layer 4 filters applied in the local hypervisors. And now you have full-blown access control list that you can implement on layer 2 ports or on logical routers. So they provide even better packet filter functionality. By the way, most of these constructs are sort of stateful. So whenever, for example, a packet goes out of a VM, the return flow entry is automatically created so that the return traffic can come in without you explicitly enabling that. So it's something like reflexive access control lists in Cisco IIS. I guess that's the most commonly known term. So all the access lists, all the security profiles are sort of stateful, but it's not a full stateful firewall, so it doesn't track TCP session state, for example. In NSX for vSphere, first we have the distributed VM NIC firewalls. This is like existing vShield app with significant performance differences. The firewalls are now implemented in a loadable kernel module, so no traffic whatsoever goes through the user land like it did before. The only thing you need from the management perspective is the user world agent that communicates with the NSX controller. Firewalling functionality, layer 3, layer 4, you can match on IP addresses or vSphere objects. You can match on ARP and other layer 2 traffic filters. It's a stateful firewall, so it's not just reflexive access control lists. And you will be glad to know that it supports IPv4 and IPv6. If you need an inter-subnet firewall between two subnets or between inside and outside, what you could use is, as I mentioned before, NSX Edge Services Router, which has a pretty comprehensive feature set, so firewalling, NAT, static and dynamic routing, IPsec, VPN, SSL, VPN, load balancer, and so on. Here are the performance figures. As Brad said, this was measured with a pretty typical TCP mix, a bit biased on large sessions, so transferring 200k large web pages, and you see the performance is pretty reasonable. For the in-kernel firewall, is connection state replicated between vSphere nodes on a vMotion event? So when you vMotion, do we get session state into the other hypervisor? Or do we have to re-establish the state based on inbound and outbound traffic? We do not break vMotion with the firewall. So yes, all the necessary state to make a migration transparent to the virtual machine and continue the session forwarding, all of that necessary state in the firewall is moved with the VM. Okay, so I guess we're talking about the NIC layer firewall because otherwise the answer would be no. Does it support layer 2? Can you filter on MAC addresses or other layer 2 protocols? You can definitely filter between VMs that are on the same subnet. If you don't want them to talk, you can define that in the NIC level firewall. I don't know at the top of my head if you can plug in MAC addresses in the filtering rules. Um, I don't know if you know the answer to that, Scott. But if the larger question is, can you protect traffic between systems or between VMs that are on the same logical layer 2 network? The answer is definitely yes. I'm entirely sure whether we can use specific MAC addresses. No, I don't remember seeing anything in the user interface. But there is definitely a filter for layer 2 protocols. Yeah, absolutely. I can go in there and I can say, I don't want this VM talking to that VM, even though they're on the same logical switch VXLAN segment. OK. 
Okay, now the stateful access control list, do they support established and related flags? I think the answer is no, because they work another way. You don't need the established flag because we are creating a flow entry for the return traffic. Next one, can you set the firewall to stateless mode? I don't know why you would want to do that, but okay, can you do it? I'm not sure. NSX for vSphere, it's stateful. I think that's just the way it runs. I haven't seen an option where you can turn it into stateless. In NSX for hypervisor, we know that you've already explained these are kind of reflexive like ACLs. So I think that's just the way they work. And here is an add-on. I would like to turn off state for HTTP. So I know that HTTP is coming into my server and I would like to turn off stateful filtering for that because I know that whatever is coming in, we ask for it anyway. But I guess the answer is no, right? So it's stateful and that's it. Well, we can say HTTP is permitted to the host and we can say that HTTP responses at the source port 80 are also permitted. So I think that would be kind of a state, you know, you're defining it, the flow in both directions. So we mm -hmm. probably wouldn't need to do the reflexive return entry in that scenario. So you would be in effect turning off the state. Can you integrate third-party virtual appliances like firewalls and load balancers with NSX? My generic answer is always yes, because they are VMs, so they have NICs, so you can connect the NICs to anything you wish. But is there any tighter integration with NSX Manager plant? Answer is yes. So you mentioned, Ivan, you can always bring your own firewall and load balancer and just have NSX view that as another VM. Oh, so that's BYOF? Yeah, <laughs> bring your own firewall. But we're taking that a step further where we're going to provide integration with partners at more of the management and control plane level. So one example of that already is with Palo Alto Networks. I think they're having a webinar on this tomorrow where they talk to NSX at an API level and register their firewalling capability with NSX as a packet uh, inspection service. And then we can push the flows through the Palo Alto service for them to do the inspection rather than the NSX firewall doing the inspection. Talking about next generation firewalls, do the distributed firewalls have any layer 7 inspection capability or is that just the services router? I believe the uh, distributed firewall is what you would expect in terms of a normal layer 3, layer 4 stateful firewall. Application layer gateways, like I just mentioned, Palo Alto Networks, you know, that's where we would partner with them to provide that functionality. Are policies like access control lists applied at the point where routing takes place? They are actually applied at the VM NICs of individual VMs. That's right. In NSX for multi hypervisor, you can have ACLs right on the VM NIC interface. You can have them on the logical router interfaces. You can have them on the gateway interfaces as well, layer 2 gateways. Yeah, and obviously, if you have it on the gateway interface, it's applied in the gateway. Yeah, yes. The VNIC firewall for vSphere. It's like the old vShield where it was all or nothing, so you had to apply it to all VMs or no VM, or can you do it now for individual VMs or groups and not others? Yes, yeah, so what you can do is you can go into vSphere, and there's this new area within vSphere called Service Composer, and that is where you can create things called containers. These are logical constructs. And then in that container, you can define which objects belong to that container. It could be, of course, virtual machines. It could be a number of different dynamic kind of policies, like anything attached to a certain logical switches in that container, so on and so forth. And then you define the rules of the traffic that can enter or leave that container or within the container. So you're basically picking and choosing which VMs ultimately you're going to expose the distributed firewall into. It's not a uh, all or nothing approach. To find other virtual networking, data center, and cloud networking webinars, visit ipspace.net.